it's uh, Molly Lamb's uh, weapons carrier. We have a 30 millimeter and a tank gun for so they could get that the service to start firing against the armed vehicles. And, uh, um, the is bad enough because they don't want to get hit, not realizing that they had, uh, the Superman had, uh, close arms, even, like, right here, they just, uh, were not close to the right. So it's going to have to go back. And they can also see out of the distance that they're down there, that might be good enough, but they're not going to go back up and take it to So the Germans are starting to pull back. Once they're going to see the one with the big team, there's a lot of the time to do a German version of the Germans. And uh, the Indian Navy was shot at that thing fired to defeat any of the army from the war. It's a very effective weapon. So it's a very effective weapon. Uh, the positions of it are uh, pretty accurately. Uh, so those were used by the team of troops. In addition to the engine house, which is a disposable uh, thing. Quarter out. Crossing of the Rhine in 1945. Uh, only small numbers there because they were difficult to get thin skin vehicles compared to what the Germans could feel. Um, though that tank could probably be matched by most of the uh, lighter German vehicles, including the things of two and a half the road. There's uh, the next tank that's coming through uh, with netting in front of it. That is a uh, Stewart like tank. Uh, the Stewart also has a 37 millimeter gun, a 30 caliber coax, and a 30 caliber bomb machine gun. Uh, where they could take the infantry targets. Uh, it was originally designed in the 30s and was meant to be a uh, uh, primary tank until they came up with heavier vehicles. They got the 75 millimeter German gun now that's inserted on the back side. The, the uh, 75 millimeter uh, actually could penetrate any of the German or the American armor that you see on the field and probably go right through it because it's a pretty powerful gun. Uh, and if you take a look at the front of the school, the steward has yeah, sandbags that are attached to the front of the so the reason for that they're doing that is that they have a lot of armor on the vehicles. Uh, so they can get a little bit more protection uh, from the lighter armor in the front of the laces plate. The advantage of the steward tank is that it was fast. It was a huge vehicle, all the way to the war uh, armor divisions. So they were able to go out and scout. Once they came under fire, they could return some fire, take out some light armor, take out some small machine gun. 
position and uh, get out of it because it moves much faster than, uh, than the heavier tank. He said the infantry that's using the tanks is covered as they're pulling up, so pulling arms cover, the rifles and stuff, the machine guns, uh, it's kind of right there with the tanks, so the tank is actually covered. The track that you see that came up with them as well, Done its mile an and uh, this is a tank of measurement on it. Uh, to uh, increase the tank to start capability. So the gun uh, that's mounted on there would be good, would have usually been a little bit more or something a little bit more true. But by putting it into the back of the track, you have to direct the back track to the direction of the enemy, and it, it's a pretty thin skinned vehicle, but it makes it much easier to carry. Uh, the small toting and things that you saw the floor earlier, that would point to the plumb into it and actually uh, open the lane and uh, operate from the ground. But once you fire, you expose your position. So even if you're in concealment, uh, you would uh, usually be hit by return fire from the enemy. Whereas in this case, you could have a large gun that's mounted on a separate armor chassis. You go forward, and uh, once you fire and expose your position, you can quickly move to another position. What people are looking at? You can see that there's artillery coming into the tanks that are working out trying to keep those positions in the air. Things are taking place down and just burning out. A lot of times if this is a family in Normandy, the, one of the huge advantages of the United States is that they air supremacy. They took the Luftwaffe out pretty much on day one, and uh, they took the During the day, they were going to take the tanks down and not move. They were going to move their guns. But because France and Normandy are so far in the air, it's very exciting. Uh, when they chose the, the, the start this assault in June, the longest days of the year uh, were about the time that this battle was happening. And uh, it gets dark in Normandy, and you go about midnight, like the early midnight, uh, because they're so far north. The uh, the north of the and then it was taking about 3.34 in the morning, so you only have about three hours to actually move troops up. So one of the issues that the Germans ran into is when they're trying to move up a uh, reserve unit so that they could only do it for three hours at night, then they had to find concealment because as soon as it had first light uh, until dusk at 11.30 or midnight, uh, they would have fighter bombers that were patrolled and any of the moved down the road in the German sectors they would immediately go through and take off. Uh, the vehicles that you see out here, if this is Normandy in 1944, would have had bright uh, fluorescent pink Very or funny. fluorescent okay. orange okay. panels that would have been put on the back of the vehicle to you know, identify where the front line was instead of going to fighter bombers that not slip into the front line. Because it's really good to tell um, who the troops are and what the vehicles are from the air unless you're really close. So they're working on getting closer and picking out uh, as much of the positions there. It looks like the uh, 25 millimeter guns now been taken out. Uh, so it's being dealing with machine gun with small arms fire that they're dealing with. Since the Germans were only able to take out uh, the tanks, the tanks that even in the late ones offer a distinctive advantage on the army that was demonstrated. The Germans had supply issues, so while they had quite a bit of artillery, once uh, a first couple of weeks of fighting went through, they had a hard time getting a resupply. And again, they couldn't move supply trucks until after midnight and until about 3.34 in the morning uh, because it was very, very limited. Uh, with what they could do, otherwise they got hit by fighter bombs. And they had to drive at night uh, mainly with uh, either blackout lights or no lights at all. 